y'all. I said, what's up, y'all? Look at me when I'm talking to you, bro. Nah, I'm just messing with y'all, man. This your boy, Knockout Boxing 86 TV, and we in here. So check this out, bro. Before we get going on our video, smash my like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Share the video. Turn on your notifications and go follow me on Twitter at KOBoxing86TV. If you got a breakdown or a prediction that you'd like me to do for you, knockoutboxing86 at yahoo.com is the email address. And don't forget about our live shows. You can catch me live every Wednesday and Thursday night, 7.30 p.m. Central Time. Also live every Sunday morning with the singing OG KQKC Boxing Network, Sunday mornings, 9 a.m. Central Standard um, Time. But let's go ahead and get it popping. Let's get into our video. And today, we got to talk about Earl Spence Jr., man. We got to talk about Earl Spence Jr. He say, once again, doubling down. You know, earlier, before he fought Udinis Ugas, he says, I need to fight a champion next. Mandatory, or for those, I mean, tune-ups are for those that don't believe in themselves. And in some recent comments, he doubles down on that notion, basically saying he don't believe in tune-ups. This is what Earl had to say, man. He says, I don't believe in tune-ups. Nah, I'm saying. They're not with my pedigree. Fighting someone I know I'm supposed to beat, and I know it's a showcase fight. I'm still going to train hard, but I'm not going to train as hard if I'm fighting a top dude with a name. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like the fans deserve it too. They don't want to see me fight a bum dude or a showcase fight. They want to see me fight the best in the biz. It's 100% factual, Earl. That's what we want from you, and that's what we want. From every single person that laces them gloves up. Let's take a sip for the hate. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Um, We want that for all our fighters, bro. And the fighters on this channel, they don't give it to us. And we know it's their fault. Then, bro, we're going we gonna to criticize them. Canelo Alvarez. I felt like David Benavidez. Jamal Charlo was a better deal and was a better fight and was more competitive and would have proven more for Canelo than Bivol and um, Triple G because he had already fought Triple G twice. And Bivol, to his credit, let everybody know, nah, bro, you wrong about that shit knockout. I'm going to beat his ass and derail all his plans and shit. He let us know that he was definitely a force to be reckoned with and we saw him as a good fighter but didn't anticipate that he would do what he did to Canelo but we criticized Canelo because everybody knew that the bigger names the guys that had more respect in the sport of boxing were David Benavidez and Jamal Charlo at that point in their careers over Triple G the Triple G is what really brought that that whole little fight deal down because we already seen that twice and Triple G was pushing over 40 and we saw how that fight turned out so we criticize Canelo, Ryan Garcia pulling out of fights, not giving us the fights that we want. You know what I'm saying? We finally gave him a little credit when it looked like him and Javante Davis agreed to it. But what we do, we own his helmet. We own his helmet when he ain't fighting who we want to see him fight, bro. When he ain't out here trying to do what we need him to do as a fighter. And it's no different for Earl Spence Jr. And it's no different for Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford... You'll never hear on this channel that Terrence Crawford can't fight. You'll never hear that he not skilled. What you will hear is, damn, bro, you had the Spence fight. Why did you go and do this instead? What you will hear is, damn, bro, all you have to do is sign and we'll get the fight that we want. But you was playing some bullshit-ass games and we see that you lying, bro. That's what you'll hear us talk about. You'll never hear us talk about he can't fight inside the ring. With well, Earl Spence Jr., we want you to fight the best. That's why we were very disappointed that you and, and Terrence Bud Crawford aren't fighting. And what have I always told you guys about champions, bro? I need champions fighting mandatories or unifying with champions in their division. If it's going to be a voluntary, it better be a damn big name, bro. It better be a damn big name that we know can fight and there's going to be a big fight than whatever you got going on. Case in point. We want Canelo Alvarez versus David Benavidez. Or Canelo Alvarez versus Andrade. Or Canelo Alvarez versus Charlo. But if tomorrow, hypothetically, Canelo Alvarez announces a fight and he's defending his 168-pound titles, against Earl Spence Jr. 
or against Terrence Crawford, ain't nobody going to criticize Canelo Alvarez for that type of voluntary defense. If your voluntary defense is a big-ass name that's very, very, you know, very reputable, very, very lit in the sport of boxing, then we ain't criticizing you. Monster in a way, same thing, bro. If Monster in a way announces that he going to defend his 118-pound titles in a voluntary defense, Against Jesse Van Rodriguez, ain't nobody gonna criticize him for taking a voluntary over a mandatory. Bro. The criticism comes when your voluntary is some tune up to Earl's point or somebody that we know ain't got a snowball's chance in hell, bro. And so I like that. And the thing about Earl saying this is that so far during his run as a champion, those that those words have aligned with his actions. He became champion when he beat Kell Brook. After he beat Kell Brook, he fought Carlos Ocampo as a mandatory. After that, he got a voluntary defense against a pound-for-pound -pound fighter in Mikey Garcia. After that, he fought Danny Garcia as a mandatory. I'm sorry, before Danny, he fought Sean Porter in a unification fight. Two champions. Then Danny Garcia is a mandatory. Then Eudemus Ugas is a champion to unify three belts. Now he is saying, I want to fight big names. I don't, I don't believe in tune-ups. And what are we coming off the back of? He just tried to negotiate a deal with Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford pulled out of the fight. When it did something else, the WBC mandated he fight Keith Thurman, and it looks like that's the fight that we're going to get. So his actions are matching up with his words. I just hope that after this fight that he has with Keith in April, because I believe it's going to be Keith, I just hope for the sake of boxing that we get Earl Spence versus Terrence Crawford next. What I'm asking Terrence Bud Crawford to do, fight in the summertime too, bro. Don't start this whole shit where Earl get done fighting in April again. And then your ass is like, well, I told him I need to fight this year. And then you just stall, 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 stall. And then boom, you fighting somebody else yet again, bro. On the same bullshit. I want them to get on the same timeline. What's happening is, neither one of them wants to get into the ring with the other person off of a long layoff. That, 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 that's what I believe is going on. So if Bud Crawford don't fight... He ain't going to want to fight Earl Spence in November when his last fight was in December of 2022. And he just saw Earl fight four or five months prior. He's going to want to be sharp. So I want him to fight during the summertime too. April, May, June, July. I don't care, bro. Fight around that same time. So y'all can get it popping at the end of the year. No one will be mad at a tune-up if we know what's coming around the corner, bro. That's why ain't nobody mad at this Tank Davis fight this week, man. That's why if Ryan would have went through with his goddamn tune-up that he had at the end of January, nobody would have been mad at that shit, man. Everybody would have been cool with it because we knew what he had coming around the bend. So Earl and Terrence can work on their fight. Both get through what they need to get through and already have agreed to fight later on in the year and then boom, everybody be happy, bro. We won't care who you fight. But that's, what, that's the difference. If y'all want to know the difference, that's the difference between... Why Earl get the love he get, and why Bud Crawford get the criticism that he get, because it ain't hate. When it's the truth, it's not hate, bro. When you're fighting, when you pull out of the fight, and you pull out of the fight and you choose to fight a voluntary defense against Avenesian, but the other guy didn't pull out of the fight, and he was really trying to make that fight, but because you pulled out of the fight, he now gets ordered to fight a bigger name and keep Thurman, and then the and then fights him and makes a deal with him, that's why he ain't getting the criticism that some of y'all want to give him, bro. And you know that he wouldn't even be fighting Keith Thurman if Bud would have just signed to fight him in the first place. It's 100% facts. The WBC ordered Earl Spence versus Keith Thurman after Bud announced his David Avenesian fight. After. If Bud didn't announce no David Avenesian fight, but instead signed on the dotted line to fight Earl, and they was getting it popping. WBC wouldn't order shit, bro. 
it's Bud fault that Earl got a, had to go make a fight with Keith Thurman. And then keep in mind, Bud Crawford didn't even say shit about Earl spinning the block or that he was ready to make the fight until Earl said, I was about to make a fight announcement. But the car accident pushed it back a little bit, so now I'm going to return in April, May, or June. And then right after that, Bud, oh, I'm ready for you to spin the block. Just letting you know. Oh, but you already know he was about to make a fight announcement and you knew that the fight was already done. Come on, man. Come on, man. Talk to me. Come on, bro. Talk to me. Tell me something. Tell me something. It's a coincidence. Come on, man. Come on. Let me take a sip for the action. Hmm. Shit good. <laughs> That shit good. So, in summation, bro, and to close this shit out, man, real talk, I wish all fighters behaved this way, man. Fans ain't tripping off of mandatory for you to keep your belt. Real ones, anyway. Fans ain't tripping if your voluntary is a big-ass name. You lose fans, and people criticize you when you got an opportunity to fight a big-ass name. But instead, you choose somebody we know you're going to beat. That's when the criticism comes, bro. If Earl fights Keith Thurman, it's because his choices were very simple. Fight him or vacate your WBC title. He didn't have a choice. He don't have a choice in the matter. Or he could or he could try to go back and negotiate with the dude that left him at the table. He can drop his fight announcement. He can drop the fight that he already got signed. And go back to the dude that pulled the wool out from everybody's eyes. Bro. That's what y'all want him to do. He could do that. And I, I, I want him to do that. But I'm not going to get mad at him for not doing it. Because I know if you pull the wool over my eyes. And I have to go do something else, make other moves because you pulled the wool out, out from under, you know, you pulled the wool out from under my eyes. If I know that that's what you did to me, I'm not going to come back to you and stop everything else I got going on. Because now you say you ready after you the one that did the whole shit in the first place. Now you got to wait, bro. Would none of this shit be necessary? I wouldn't even be making this video if Bud Crawford would have just signed a fight early in the first place. But y'all let me know what y'all think, man. Comment down below, smash the like button. Sub to the channel, share the video, turn on your notifications. Go follow me on Twitter at KOBoxing86TV. For breakdowns and predictions, you can hit my email, knockoutboxing86yahoo.com. Appreciate everybody watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. And with that, we out of here. Peace out, y'all.